What is going on? Charles Botenston here. And today we're going to be talking about resolutions. We're going to be talking about the new year. And they, I guess the, the best way that I actually break it down. So it's completely up to you on how you do it. But you, you have to have an overall general theme for the year. So I'll just go over mine for the last couple of years. And this really started in about 2016, where actually 2015. So I already was about two years into my own company. I was still in real estate. I was just, I was trying to get a lot of things right at the same time. I was trying to get my money right. I was trying to get my health right. I was trying to get not only my relationships, but also just expanding my, say, my, my sphere of influence. I was also trying to get YouTube right. There was just so much shit going on that I got nothing done. It's the classic Eat That Frog, which is by Brian Tracy. The One Thing by Gary Keller. It's even Atomic Habits where they say, just do the smallest thing possible. Do the smallest thing possible. That is put on your shoes and walk outside. It doesn't really matter. So this is, this is the biggest thing. And, and what I'm going to say is you have to have a general theme. For me, it was 2016. 2016, I needed to get my health right. So in 2016, I read every book I could. I read, because health is not just the food. It is not just exercise. It's your mindset. It's your meditation. It's what you put in and on your body. It's how often do you eat? How much sleep do you get? What time do you wake up? When you wake up, is it consistently at the exact same time? Do you go on your phone? What's your, what's your actual interpersonal relationships, which is a general overview of your health? What, what's the dynamics? Is there a lot of drama? So I started literally researching as much as I could, and I said, holy shit. I am completely ignorant to the subject. I had no idea that sleep, I knew that sleep mattered. Like, oh, get eight hours of sleep. But they didn't tell me that if you don't get eight hours of sleep and you don't do that consistently, you are actually worse than someone that had a one point something BAC, which is blood alcohol level. In other words, if you don't get enough sleep, you're pretty much drunk. You can't make good decisions. You, you, you have no willpower. You're definitely not going to do the one thing. You're just going to get lazy, 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 and not do what you need to do. So all of 2016, I said, all right, let's get my health right. So I started building the habits within my health. And this is the thing. Let's just go into 2017. 2017, I said, okay, we need to focus on business. Okay, so focusing on business, that meant how many calls am I making? What's my team going to do? What's my actual, when I get a new agent, what, what kind of process are they going to go through? So I started reading not only prospecting, sales, marketing, understanding how to do the accounting, which was brutal. I didn't like accounting. I failed statistics one, twice. I failed statistics two, twice. And if I failed it for a third time in either case, I was kicked out of college. So I wasn't good at math. I wasn't good at statistics. And I used that as an excuse to not actually do anything. I use that as an excuse. There's, there's plenty of excuses that you're using right now. Well, my family never focused on health. My family never owned a business. My family never really cared about finances. Well, you do, okay? And that was all about this year's theme. So this year's theme, it was getting my money right. I was sick and tired of going more month than my money. Or if I made, say $200,000, say last year, I made $200,000 right around there, and, and then spending $200,000. What? How much I make is in direct proportion to how much I spend? That's stupid. Why? What's the return on that $200,000? Was I actually getting money back? Was I saving enough? Was I, was I actually putting this away for a rainy day fund when the market turns? So this entire year was about getting my money right, and it was understanding that you, you have a, an addiction, me, to a lot of things. There is alcohol, say beer in my refrigerator, I'm probably gonna drink it. If I have shitty food in my apartment, I'm probably gonna eat it. If I have a lot of money in my bank account, I'm probably gonna spend it. That's just my personality. So I could use that as an excuse, or I could just say, let's make this a lot harder for me to eat, spend, or drink. Let's not buy it, alcohol. Let's not actually put that in my checking account or savings account. Let's put that in an IRA or, or a low cost index fund, which is at Vanguard. Let's open up a completely separate bank account than Chase. Let's open up a Bank of America and stick all my money there so it has to take a couple of days to go back and forth and I don't even see it when I check my bank account. I completely forget about it. That's the thing is that you have to have an overall theme. There's only three areas that you really need to focus on but honestly for me, if you don't have your health right, that is number one because that's the foundation for everything. It's the foundation to making making you feel better. David Goggins on a podcast, I highly recommend. It is the name of the podcast. I actually have it up right now. It's I, I've already listened to the audio two times, two or three times, and now I'm going to watch it. And it's under the Art of Charm. 
and it's called Master Your Mindset with David Goggins. It just came out uh, November 23rd. Well, that's probably almost three weeks ago, but either way, it is probably one of the better ones. I've seen him on Impact Theory, Lewis Howes. Obviously, I'm gonna go through the book. I'm gonna be talking about the book tomorrow when I film. But the number one thing, and he said it in there, is that you have to get your health right. You have to get your health right. That, that's really the hardest thing to discipline yourself because there's so much mediocrity in this world. There is so much. Everyone is average. And everyone that's average doesn't wanna see someone else succeeding because then they question themselves. I figured this out years ago, but the problem is I never fucking did anything about it. I never did anything. Everyone's average. So I was like, oh, okay, you know. And guess what happened to me? I stayed average. I started saying, well, I don't wanna leave my friends behind. I don't wanna leave my colleagues behind. I don't wanna leave this person behind. So I never did anything. But that's the thing is that when you start going up, there's gonna be less and less people. David Goggins talks about it all the time. He goes, there's not many hard people in this world. In other words, people that are just pushing themselves to the limit, but, which is, by the way, people are like, you should get more rest. You should do this. You should recover. We're not pushing ourselves enough to actually recover. Let, let's be real for a second. Real talk. We're not pushing ourselves when it comes to the gym. Well, I'm feeling a little bit tired or my legs or something like that. You know what? Why don't you get to 40%, which he calls the 40% rule. Why don't you get to 40%, then go to 45%, then you can rest for a day or an hour or half a day. That's the thing is that we run around the block and then we take a week off. We make 10 sales calls and then we take a week off or we read whatever amount of book. And the reason being is that Tony Robbins has already talked about this, is that we have a temperature gauge in every area of our life. We have a temperature gauge. For me, it, it was being in all right shape for years for actually my whole life. It was being in all right shape. Enough that, you know, I can go without being winded, but I never exerted myself. I never did that 50 mile bike ride. I never did that run, that, that real hard workout like I did this morning because that was that was not never part of my, my fitness temperature. So I would go above that or my mind said, well, you've never been here. And then you take two or three days off and then you go back to normal. What about that time that you wanna save a ton of money and then you start saving all that money and you're like, why don't I spend it or go on a trip or buy those new shoes or that watch or something and then you come right back down. Same thing with your relationship. The quality of whatever you want in life, your body, your finances, your relationships is in direct proportion to how uncomfortable you are willing to be. Uncomfortable making sales calls, uncomfortable talking to that pretty girl, uncomfortable making more than what you're used to, uncomfortable in your savings account, how much money you have saved up. Th this is an entirety of your resolution. And why do I bring that all up? Because it took me one full year to get my health right. It took me one full year to understand business. And we'll just go over this for a second. So for what I've learned, this might be a longer video than normal, but from what I learned on health, is there's really four aspects. Number one is consuming food and understanding how you feel when you consume that food. When I had, I haven't had processed food in a while, but when I had processed food, I was lethargic, I was not energetic, I just felt like shit. I would break out, I would get pimples. I would not really push it in the gym because my body was like, how do I use this as fuel? How do I use this as energy? This is a body you rent. So I started going into that. I was like, all right, what do I consume? And then what's my daily routine? What time do I go to bed? What do I, when do I eat? Not only alcohol, but just even coffee do I consume? What time do I wake up? So just getting that daily pattern. The third thing is just the other shit, you know, the chemicals, the, you know, what I put in my hair is water-based. What I, how I brush my teeth is there's no fluoride. There is a bunch of other things that are, are good for you. There's no aluminum in my deodorant. There's a lot of things in there. And then the fourth thing is your mindset. I think the mindset is actually the most important thing because you can change everything else. Then I moved over to business. Business, I said, there is one thing that I need to do every single day. That's all I learned. It took me a year to learn that and actually embody that. My number one thing is to actually make calls. That's all I need to do is just prospect. If I prospect every single day, shit will happen. This coming year is gonna be about relationships. I'm turning 34 in July, so I'm many months away from 34, but I wanna get this right. So I started talking to people, and then I started asking girls numbers sober. I'm compl I am completely disconnected my dating profiles from you know Facebook, so there's no way I could log in. I would have to start a new account and things like that. So I am completely reliant to meeting people through friends, social events, the streets, through 
wherever. It doesn't really matter. The gym. So next year, it's really between that and building a team. I'm, I'm still figuring it out where I want to go. But for you guys, you have to have one theme. I highly recommend it's health and you just rip through all the health books that you can where your mind is completely oversaturated because when you start doing that, you start saying, holy shit. It's not about the actual right now, which is cookies and bread and all that other jazz. It's about what am I going to be if I continue on this, this path? And, and one of the best quotes that James Clear, who wrote Atomic Habits, he, he had a, an incredible quote. He was asked in a Q&A and, and they said in three sentences, how do you sum up this book? He said, the first sentence was the most powerful one. He said, each action you take is a vote for who you want to be. Every action you take is a vote for who you want to be. Who do you want to be? Every action, it matters. So you start with theme, research, and then you go right into what am I going to do every single day? It's not an outcome. I'm going to lose this amount of weight. I want a six pack. I want to be waking up at this time. Those are outcomes. You know, it's like, I want to make $80,000 this year. How are you going to do that? That is the leading indicator. The lagging indicator is I've closed $80,000 worth of business. The leading indicator is I'm prospecting every single day. You want to lose weight? That's the outcome. The leading indicator, so the, the lagging indicator is how many pounds have I lost? The leading indicator is how often do I go to the gym? What am I consuming? How's my calorie count? Am I standing at work? Am I sitting down at work? What time am I waking up? How often do I go to the gym? How hard do I go at the gym? Am I lifting more weight? That's really what it comes down to is you need a leading indicator and you get that from the four D's. I think it's called the four D's uh, or I forgot the name of the book, but it's leading lagging indicators. Just look that up. Uh, I forgot the name of the book on that one, but I hope this helps a little bit. Your resolutions, and I'll, I'll leave you with this, is that I forgot who did the study, but when I was at Equinox two years ago, someone brought it up. It was very interesting because why does every gym start a resolution, uh, no money down, no monthly, January free sign up for all new members? Why do they do that now? Because they know that people are thinking about it. But this is the interesting study is that they're fine with getting people to sign up, but for them to continue their actual membership, it comes down to one thing. If they go to the gym for 17 days, and out of those 17 days, they go to the 18th day, that's, that's kind of the tipping point, is if they go to the 18th day, they are more likely to continue their membership. So that's the thing is that, that's great that you have all these members that are joining, but do they continue the membership? So what they've noticed is that if you keep on going to the gym after the 18th day, you're more likely to renew your, your membership. So their whole thing, is how do we get them in for those 18 days? They said there's a huge drop off and understandably so. That's about almost three weeks in. It's cold, it's rainy, their motivation, their momentum has worn off. And now it's about why. Why am I here? Why am I actually doing this? Hope that helps. Leave your comments below. L let me know what your resolutions are and the leading indicators. How are you gonna be doing that every single day? You gotta, two books, my two favorite books, uh, number one, Atomic Habits, and number two is David Goggins' Can't Hurt Me. I'm gonna rip through the audiobook again. I'm gonna be doing a David Goggins book review tomorrow, and have an amazing day. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Talk to you guys soon.